Welcome back for more Pigments. Today, Pigments Part 2, or Chapter 1. We, we decided that we had an intro, we did a brief prologue that you'll never see, and Chapter 1, we are going to talk today about transparency and opacity. I've got two oil colors right here, okay? I've got a cerulean blue and a cobalt blue. Okay, these two colors are generally uh, known for being opaque and transparent, and this is oil paint. And I have some paper here with a little black line, all right? So this is not how an actual paint drawdown is done. This is my artist science standards here. This is just playing with paint to try to give you an idea. If I was actually doing a drawdown, there'd be a very specific tool to make sure that it was an even distribution of paint. We don't have that tool or time, Olivia. So let's just go into it, okay? So this is that cerulean blue. Okay, and it is an opaque paint. Now, I'm gonna try to keep them as even as possible, but you can kind of see how it will cover that line up. Do you want me to hold that up for you, Will? Got it, okay. Now, let's switch over to this cobalt blue, and <laughs> it's a dark color, but hopefully, regardless, That's probably really way too dark to, I don't know if you can, can you see that? You can see that, okay. Hopefully you'll trust me enough. After all this time, we've been together a long time, guys. Just trust me, this is transparent. Just because my point didn't get made doesn't mean we can't make a video. Um, the bottom line is, is that this is an opaque pigment and this is a transparent pigment. Now, that's just tip of the iceberg, right? Um, most oil paints, acrylic paints that have an actual color swatch, whether it's on the tube or, you know, like in our stores, if it's not on the tube, sometimes we'll put it um, on the container that the paint comes in. You'll see that there's like a black line beneath the paint. If you can see that line, it means it's a transparent pigment. If you cannot see that line, it's an opaque pigment, okay? So that's the easiest way to just kind of decipher. Um, you will see that there are some paints that are semi-opaque, Oh, there's so many nuances. We're not going to talk about semi-opaque. I think you understand what that means. It's a little opaque. It's a semi. It's a semi-opaque pigment. Well, what are the features and benefits of an opaque pigment, right? Well, like I said, covering power, right? Also, they are going to be what you would use to knock down those higher tinting strength colors. Now, I don't think we've got, we haven't gotten to it yet in this series when I talk about tinting strength and, and staining, but in, in previous videos that we've done frequently asked questions, we've talked a little bit about uh, tinting strength. If you have a higher tinting strength color, uh, that means that you'll need a lot. So let's say that you want to make a, a very bright green using phthalo blue and you've only got a, a little bit of yellow and a lot of blue you'll want to use a heavier opaque yellow, like a, a, a cadmium yellow to help really get that more green uh, because the blue is so powerful. Did that make any sense? It did. Okay, she assures me it made sense. So if you have a little bit of yellow, a lot of blue, get more yellow or make sure you're using a very high opaque yellow paint and that will hopefully counteract the tinting strength of that higher tinting strength paint. Okay, I've already confused myself. Now, an opaque color, generally speaking, brightest on its own, okay? So I'm gonna switch over to watercolor here. All right, I did it again, I, okay. I'm gonna switch over to watercolor here. Now, this is a cadmium red light, all right? And this is my set from home. This is a set that I love. Uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with the colors. And when you're working with an opaque color, they are generally the most brilliant alone. They, they can be mixed, you can mix with them. But generally speaking, those, op uh, those opaque pigment colors, such as cadmium red, will always shine the brightest when you don't tweak it. You don't add white to it. You don't add anything else to it. You can, but it will dull, dull down that chroma. It will affect the color a little bit, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just something that I want you to be aware of, okay? So when we look at watercolor, which is supposed to be transparent, but we've put an opaque pigment in it, it's still transparent. But that's confusing. You're, you look confused. Okay, so we're going to do this again. Have my little, oh, I did it too fast again, Olivia. Let me slow that down. Very official line, okay? 
So these are, these are not the same colors here, okay? These are two separate colors, but I'm trying to prove a point, Will. So I'm going to go here with a, like an alizarin crimson, okay? Is that okay with you, Will? You didn't answer me. Okay, good. I want you to be, want you to be very happy. Now, when I take, when I take this transparent watercolor and put it over the line, you can still see the line underneath it just fine, right? Okay. Now, when I switch over to the, uh, this is the um, cadmium red light, you're going to notice something. Guess what? you can still sort of make that line out underneath, but it's definitely covering more. This is still a transparent watercolor. This is not an opaque watercolor. Opaque watercolor is gouache. And I'm gonna show you the differences of that real quick in a second. But you will see that it does have more covering power, but it is not completely opaque, okay? So let's just look at a watercolor. I've got two on the other end of the spectrum here. This is a watercolor cobalt blue, very transparent, okay? And this is a gouache cobalt blue, still very transparent. So this is the other end of the spectrum. Now we're gonna actually, let me get my turner and other things out of the way here. We're gonna, I need to do another line. Oh my gosh, go slow this time, Olivia. Now again, I don't know why I picked colors that were so hard to see. Okay, so these are both cobalt blue but these are from two separate manufacturers, so most likely they won't match. Everything's confusing in art. But let's start with the watercolor, okay? So I'm gonna go into the watercolor. Give Will a second to get over here. All right. Now, this will allow you, I don't even know if this is a good example, you can still see that line underneath. I probably should have had black paper with a white line. You can still see the line through it, okay? You can see the line through. I burned hair on my arm. I just noticed. I can still see that line through it, okay? Because this is a transparent watercolor with a transparent pigment. That makes sense, right? That's easy, that's clean. I like clean and easy. Now this is gouache. This is a transparent pigment in an opaque paint. This is designed to cover completely. In addition to drawing matte and other various things that go into a, uh, what makes a gouache unique, and that was another frequently asked artist question that I get is, you know, what is gouache exactly? And I've debated making that video, but even I'm like, uh, I don't know. Um, so let me hold that up for a second. So again, these are two different manufacturers, but these are both cobalt blue. You can see that you can, well, hopefully you can see, it's trans, they're both transparent pigments, but the nature of gouache is to be opaque, where the nature of watercolor is to be transparent. So. When it comes to mixing them, we talked about how you want to use, um, oh, that was that. So when it comes to mixing them, using transparent colors together definitely um, makes it uh, the most uh, luminous, but you can use opaque colors with transparent colors. My bottom fell off. The biggest thing that I want to, when it comes to opaque pigments, whether you're using it in watercolors, acrylics, oils, opaque pigments, you have to take care because it's much easier to mix mud when you're working with opaque pigments. They're still great, you can still mix them, but just make sure you get to know them a little bit. You know, take them out for a drink. Make, your, make yourself comfortable around them. And they will treat you very nicely, and they have a very good place in art, and there's a reason that they exist. They have that high covering power, and they're just brilliant looking. And continue to let me know uh, if I further confuse you. If you have other questions, if you want to know more about pigments, please leave your comments below, and I will try my best to explain them in a way that does not want anybody to uh, stop doing art, because it, it can be confusing. I'm trying to make it less confusing. You're even covering your face. I don't know what that means. So, um, so the point is to get to know the pigments. You know, you want to get to know the paint, and you want to get to know me on Instagram at Mike Not Jerry. Where we're continuing to add original content, help to design, help to, help to design, help to inspire your creative side, and uh, have some fun while we're at it. I have fun. I have lots of fun.
you might not know this about me, Olivia, but I like to have a good time. Usually it's by myself, but it's fun nonetheless. And we will see you on the second chapter. Why are you making that face at me? What? Oh, I just heard what I said. Well, it's still true. Listen, we'll see you next time. Chapter three. I don't know what it will be yet. It won't be today. I will finally change my shirt. I've been wearing this for days because it's been taking days to get this done. I've shaved twice. So thanks so much. And uh, you know I hate ending videos with that. See you next time. You're just leaving me up here, aren't you? Usually to get people hooked on something, you do the long, boring one first. That's not how you get people hooked on something, but that seems to be what we did. I had to start a fire. I don't know, I, I don't know if it's part one or part two because the first one wasn't even really a thing. Transparency and opacity. Opacity, right, that's how they pronounce it in uh, nowhere. Is this chapter one or is it chapter two? Okay, so the first one's the introduction. The intro, yeah. Then you have chapter one. The prelude. We need a prologue. That's the prologue. Look at the light.